Hi, this is Trinisha Cottrell, and today I wanted to talk about the best. I was going to call it either my best or the best, but today at church, the pastor talk, talked about, and so today is Sunday, So, <laughs> but when you see this video, it'll probably be like a Saturday or any other day of the week because usually it just falls on random days, and if God puts on my heart for me to release something on a certain day because someone might need the message or whatever, then I'll release it that day. But usually they go in chronological order. So I try to <laughs> I try to make sure that the each previous date doesn't precede the last. And so <laughs> as I'm in church today, the pastor talks about giving God our best. And as he starts to tell the story, he talks about the story of Lazarus. And for those of you who don't know, of course, I'm going to paraphrase. This isn't going to be exact. So definitely read. I think it's John 12 for yourself to learn the story of Lazarus and how he had died. And Jesus had decided that he was going to delay his visit four days before he went to go see Lazarus sisters, Martha and Mary. And so while he had delayed the visit Lazarus had died and so the one of the sisters came up to Jesus and said you know you've waited too late so he's dead and Jesus said he will be resurrected and the sister says yeah you know when you know when everything is done and you know when you come back and and everything else and we will all be new you know and everything else she's thinking he meant in that way like when the world is you know redone <laughs> or when, when, you know, Christ comes back. And so he, he doesn't mean that he means that he can raise him from the dead and resurrect him. And so as he's visiting Mary and Martha, Martha's in the kitchen, she's cooking and she's doing all of this other stuff. And she thinks that Mary's being lazy because she's just sitting there with, with Jesus. And I've, I've heard a couple different pastors say the story a couple different ways, but the, the just, the gist of the story or the the meaning behind this story continues to be the same. The same perception is perceived, even though, even though like certain key points are pulled away from it that are different, the message doesn't change. And so as the pastor talks about the story and how Mary just kind of sat with him and she, she was with him the entire time and she's listening to him. She is, she's sitting with him and she's putting oil She's using her most valuable possession, which is her per perfume, and she pours it all over him. You know, she's she's using her oil instead of like um, Judas Is Iscariot tried to tell her, you know, you could sell this and, and it would have been worth, I guess, I guess a year's of salary or something like that. But she decided to use that for Jesus. And then not only that, but then she used her hair for his feet and the hair in the Bible is said to be the most crown possession. It's the most glorious possession. And so, <laughs> so the pastor goes on and he, he talks about, you know, how women with their hair, like when they hate, when they have a great hair day, it seems like their whole personality, like they are in a better mood and everything else. And when they have a bad hair day, it's kind of like, uh, you know, so, but the point was that she decided to give Jesus her most prized possessions, her hair and her oil. And because she did that, she was giving God the best of her. And sometimes in life, we really think about how we could benefit from a situation. We think about what we can do that for our lives or or we think about other people, you know, what other people are going to think of us instead of thinking about being the best that we can for God. And I have been guilty of this in the past. I've been guilty of wanting to seek approval or, you know, wanting to do something for my own selfish gain instead of wanting to do it because it's pleasing to God. And one thing that really helps me is being intentional. And I know intentional keeps popping up in every video for some reason. I guess this is just the word that God is placing on my heart because I really feel like without intentionality, life ceases to exist. It ceases to be beneficial, to be blessed, to be a, be something that gains, that you get to gain from. And so when I, I did my post today online, I do a post every week for an outfit of, you know, I do like an outfit. Usually I'm wearing like fashionable stuff every, every day. But during the once a week, I post something that I think will help encourage someone else. It's something that I might have learned from church. And I do it because, <laughs> so let me be honest. 
and also transparent at the same time. When I started this outfit thing and I started it, it was because TG has suggested when you're healing for you to do something like this, that it'll give you confidence and it'll help you in other ways. It'll be something that you get to put on your schedule that allows you to have some sort of focus throughout your day. So while you're scheduling or you're, you're making time for things that really are helping grow you, it'll allow you to become a better person. And it has blessed me so much and blessed so many other people. Like it helped so many other people because I do it because I really love fashion and because it really does make me feel like, okay, you know, even though I'm doing this outfit, I've I've even like started adding on as time went went on. So before it would be like the outfit and you know, I always do some kind of inspirational quote. Like I might say like one little sentence blurb or a couple words or something like that. But it has developed into this thing where once a week I do like this outfit and I also talk about what I learned in church or I talk about whatever it is that God put heavy on my heart. Like he he really put this in my spirit for me to talk on whatever it is. And so if I'm in church or if I'm learning something new and and I my main thing is I want other people to know what I know. So if I know something, I don't want to be that person that's like that's like, oh, no, God gave me this message. Let me not tell anybody else to help someone else, even though it could bless someone else's situation or could bless someone else's life. I don't feel like that at all. I feel like if God gave it to me, it's for me to give it to somebody else unless God says this is specifically for you. And he has done that before in the past. Like he's told me things about like certain people or places or things and it's like no this isn't for you to share with everybody this is for you to know because it'll bless you and it'll help you in this way and I might not know what the full story is but it really does help me keep my head on straight it helps me keep focused on the things that God wants me to do and not just to just to be like oh no it won't matter so let me not do it it really helps keep me steady it keeps me intentional in my life and so (laughs) So as we go through life, I really want every person to really think about what it is that that will allow them to give God their best. What is the best version of you? What are the best things of you? What are the best things that you can do to be intentional with your relationship with God? And and (laughs) as I go through my journey, the more I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm 100 percent in with God. And then God will say, don't do this or get rid of this or let this person go. And I'll be like, oh. Like, like, I really feel like I'm all in for God. And then when God tells me to get rid of something like that, I really, truly feel like it's difficult sometimes. Sometimes it's hard because I want that person, place or thing. Like, I want that thing in my life right now. And God will say it's not time yet. He will say that you're not ready yet. The other person's not ready yet. They got things that that I have to break off of them before they can be ready for you. Like, you, I can't just give you something prematurely. I can't give them you prematurely. I need to make sure that any hate that you had is gone. I need to make sure that resentment is gone. I need to make sure that jealousy and security is gone. I need to make sure that that controlling tendency or that thing that you learned through previous relationships is no longer a part of what's going to be a kingdom relationship because my kingdom relationships are based on faith. It's based on seeking me first above everything else. It's based on not idolizing a person, place, or thing, or or marriage, or whatever the thing is that becomes your idol over God. I need to be able to have time with you so I can make sure that our relationship is strong enough to withstand whatever is going to come next. I can't just give you something and then you lose focus. You lose consistency in prayer you lose the relationship that you're growing with me you lose being in your bible you you lose listening to the scripture every day because you have a person or because I've given you this job that takes care of you but what we fail to realize when you get that job that person place or thing God gave it to you and anything God gives you can be taken away I'm not saying that to scare you I'm saying it because I need you to understand that if you're focused on God you don't have to worry about anything else While you're worried about how to keep someone, you need to be worried about how to keep your faith. Because as long as you're focused on God, if that thing is for you, it's always going to be there. If God blessed it, if this is something that God gave you in your life, I don't care if it's on its last leg. I don't care if you already started getting ready to sign the papers. Like, I don't know what your situation is or what you're going through, but God can allow anything to prosper in your life. He can allow anything to become blessed. If God is in it, He is more than the whole world against you. 
There's nothing that can come against that relationship. There's nothing that could take that job from you. There's nothing that can that can divide that friendship, that family, that whatever it is in your life that God has blessed you with, he's allowed to be a part of your life, cannot be removed by a person, place, or thing. Only God is the one who can control what you have in your life. And I don't know about you, <laughs> but when I think about having things in my life without God's blessing, I don't want any of those things. Sometimes I want things so badly. I'm like, oh, I really want this person, place, or thing. And if God is not like, okay, this is what I have for you. This is what I want for you. I'm, even though I want it, I know I, I can't have it in my life. And sometimes it's an emotional struggle, just to be real. Sometimes it's like, I really want this thing. I don't understand why God wouldn't allow me to have it if it's something that, that, you know, I really truly desire so much. Here's something that, that God placed on my heart. Sometimes it's not that God doesn't want to give it to you. He either doesn't want to give it to you prematurely because it's not the right time and he needs you to have it at an appointed time when you're ready. Not when you think you're ready, when you're actually ready, when he's ready for you to have it because he knows that you can handle it. Or... <laughs> You want this thing, but God has something better for you. You keep thinking this is the best that God has, but you forget that he's the God of doing the impossible. He's the God of abundance. He can make anything possible. So while you have this scarcity mindset, that is all the adversary. That is not God at all. God would never want you to feel like you're at lack of something. He would never want you to have a scarcity mindset to believe that, that you're not going to be able to get more if you give up this thing. I, it's so funny. I'm going to tell this and be transparent and people are going to be judging me, but it's fine. So I was, <laughs> I was not in church last week, but I dialed in because like whenever I can't be in the building in the physical location, I make sure that I'm dialed in. I make sure that I'm in attending church service every single Sunday. And so when I'm not in church, I don't give my tith my tidings because the church that I have has like, they do have a, a PO box where you could go in the building. And so <laughs> So for me, like when I wasn't there, I didn't give my tithing. And so in my head, I know I'm going to be judged, but I was like, oh, I could use this money for this. And then God is like, is this my 10 percent? And I'm like, yes, this is definitely your money. This is not mine. I definitely. And <laughs> the the Holy Spirit like convicted me so badly because it was like, oh, you're going to spend money on this, but you're not going to give it to me. And this is my money. And then I heard the sermon and, and the guy was like, <laughs> like, you were so ready to to be selfish with the thing that God gave you when you don't realize that it belonged to him in the first place. And I was like, OK, God, I heard you like I hear what you're saying. I'm going to give you this tithe and offering because. I need to be about that life. And obviously that's the wrong thing. To do. <laughs> but I really had a moment like that. And I say that because sometimes when you see people who are religious or Christian and or Christian, you notice that they try to make it seem like it's perfect, like they don't have moments like that. But real people have real emotions, real people emote men and women. So I don't think we need to try to make it seem as if just because you're religious, you don't feel a certain type of way. You don't go through things in life. You don't feel every single emotion because you are a human being. You don't make mistakes because you've put God, God in your life. But little do they know the mistakes that you're making are lessons that God's going to use to be able to train you for the next level. He can't take you there if you're not learning anything. If you don't have any rain, nothing can grow. He can't break off things that, that no longer serve you if you're not allowing him to work in your life and, and use those mistakes, those life lessons, those choices that you make to be able to develop you into another person. You can't grow being stagnant just thinking that you got it all figured out. You can only grow if you're willing to learn. And that's what those lessons are for, to develop you, to grow you into a better child of God, to, to make you more Christ-like. Because if you're not tempted or you're not you're not going through a, a time in your life where you are conflicted, then you are not growing because that confliction shows your growth. When you are conflicted and you make the right decision, that means that you're growing in your religion. When you make a mistake and you decide to do better, even though you have messed up, that's showing your growth in your religion. You cannot grow from nothing. You have to grow from something. So God is using those things to make you a better person, to make you more more like him more christ-like so you have to remember like 
I know they say like thou shall not judge and we know that is and is not in the Bible like <laughs> thou shall not judge is in the Bible but only God can judge me is not in the Bible is what I'm trying to say so yes we can make an observation if we've been through something we can help somebody and we could try to make the situation better or help them in some sort of way that's how we could use an observation prejudging people and just trying to make them feel badly because they're not living like you even though you're not perfect it's not good you trying to make someone feel badly because they're not doing the things that you do it's not good I see people sometimes and it's so weird it's so weird being in this in this space that I'm in because even though like I'm religious and I love God and and Jesus Christ you know died for my sins and everything else like when I see people mess up or do the wrong thing, I don't just scowl at them and then try to make them feel badly about who they are. Like I'm not that type of person who's just trying to make people feel crappy. I want people to be who they are and for God to use their struggle, their situation to be able to help them build a relationship with him. I want people to see my kindness and see the the Christ-like in me so that they know that it's not about being perfect. It's about God using you in whatever situation you've been through for your testimony so that you, it could give glory to the kingdom so that even though you're not perfect, you can help somebody in your same situation. I want people to just, I get around some people sometimes and they'll be like, oh yeah, I only drink sometimes. And I'm like, just be you. Like, you don't have, like, I understand and I, I appreciate people like respecting me in, in certain instances because they know that I don't do certain things. But that does not mean that I'm going to judge you for being yourself, you know, like, I don't know what God's using in your life to make you a better person. And me trying to change you into a, a clone of me is not going to help God in you, you know, it's not going to help God develop you. He's not going to be able to develop you the same way that he developed me. Things that work for me are not going to work for you. The blessings that God gave me or the direction that he gave me in my life with, you know, crafting or helping people or whatever else is not the same direction that he might give you. The way that he he asks for you to serve or for you to help might be different than my way. So I can't expect you to just copy paste my life to you. The only thing I could do is be loving and kind and speak life into the people around me. That's it. If you need help or if you have something that you want to ask me and you really want my honest opinion, I will be 100% honest. So think about it before you ask me because I'm going to be real. So, I mean, I'm not just going to be that type of person that's like, oh, it's okay. Like, no, you want to know what I think? This is what I think. I'm going to say it in a loving, kind way, but this is the real. Like, I don't have time to pretend like I'm going to just tell you what you want to hear. I'm not that type of person. I've never been. Even in my past relationship, I was completely honest all the time it might have been annoying I don't know but I would I'm not the type of person who just wanted to lie just to lie just to make someone else feel better I wanted to be completely honest no matter how hurtful it was like it would be some stuff it would be like so bad and I and I would be like look this is what's going on like this is the honest truth and they would be like, oh, you know, like, but they respected me for being honest because they were like, they would meet other people eventually and they'd be like, oh, this person always lies about this. I'm like, okay, but they're not me. They're not going to be, not everyone feels comfortably, comfortable being honest. And you have to give people a, a good, comfortable situation. Like you have to make them feel comfortable with you enough to be able to tell you the truth and be able to, to be honest with you like that, you know? Like not everybody, everybody's personality isn't going to be the same. And that was before, like that was years ago. That was so long ago. It, it doesn't make any sense. I have to say that because I don't just keep in touch with people that I'm no longer with. I try to make sure I sever all those ties because I need to make room for the things that God's trying to give me in my life. I don't want anybody in that space in my head, in my heart that doesn't belong there, you know? And so <laughs> I try to be real intentional about the people that I keep in my circle around me in my life. So <laughs> I definitely don't want this to be a super long video if it doesn't need to. I just wanted to hop on here and I just wanted to reiterate giving God our best. Whatever the best of you looks like, it doesn't have to look like everybody else's best. So in conclusion, it does not have to look like everyone else's best. It could look like whatever it is for you to give your best efforts, for you to be intentional with your relationship with God. For you to be seeking first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness so all can be given unto you. It is for you to stay 
exactly where it is that God wants you to be in your life so that you can continue to focus on serving, to continue focusing on God so that he can give you the desires of your heart. And it's so funny because sometimes I don't always have the strongest. I'm not always the strongest in my faith. Sometimes I don't want to say my faith wavers, but sometimes I feel a little hope deferred. And sometimes I feel like maybe God really didn't mean that he has this for me. And then something will happen or God will place something in my mind and it'll remind me that God is who he says he is and that I can hold steady to the fact that God is going to deliver on all of his promises. And the thing that really helps me or helped me in the past and something that helps me in the future is I hope will help me in the future is for my birthday last year, I bought myself these beautiful flowers. They were like pink and it was like a light pink, a dark pink, white, and I think like an orangish pink color, like a peach or something. And they were my favorite flowers. And I bought them for myself for my birthday. And I was like, this is going to be my gift to myself. I'm going to, I'm going to put these flowers on water. I can't wait to have them at home. I had a little bit of baby's breath in them, you know, and everything. So they were so beautiful. And God, after I bought the flowers, I, I was making myself a charcuterie board and everything. Cause I was like trying to do the thing, you know, I had like, it was like a whole thing. And so, <laughs> and my grandma made me this delicious uh, cherry delight, which is like my favorite dessert that she makes. And so that's, that's besides the point. But, <laughs> but I pick up these gorgeous flowers. I have this whole vibe set that I'm about to do for my birthday. And God's like, get, give the flowers to this person. I know you hear stories like this and you're like, is this real? But no, seriously, God, I felt it on my spirit. God was like, give them to this person. And I was like, in my head, I didn't say this to God. I didn't say it out loud. And I was just like, okay. In my head, like I had a moment where I was getting ready to think, oh my gosh, these flowers are so beautiful. But I was like, they're not mine. Like, that's the thing that helps me release a lot of things in life. It helps me release people that aren't mine. It helps me release things that aren't mine. It helps me release money that's not mine. Because God is blessing, blessing me with this stuff. It's not that he can't, he can never, you know, re allow me to be able to have more of that or give me even more than the things that I've gotten rid of. And so, so I'm like, oh my gosh, these flowers are beautiful. And I was like, I'm going to take a picture of these flowers. So I at least have a picture of the flowers that I bought for myself in my phone. And I give these flowers to this lady. She has the same birthday as me. So I give these flowers to this lady. And, and I'm like, okay, well, God told me to give this to you. And she wasn't at work. So I gave it to her colleague and then she got it later. And she's like, oh my gosh, thank you so much, you know, and everything. But I give the flowers to her. Not even five minutes, because I'm like five minutes from the store. So I go home. There are the most beautiful flowers I have ever seen in my entire life on my doorstep. The, my favorite flowers, along with other different ones. And they it's blue and yellow and pink. And I mean, all of these, it's so vibrant. It's in my favorite color vase. And... I mean, the flowers that I had, they were nice. It was like a good, like, like it was like this size of flowers. The flowers on my doorstep was like this. It was a huge bouquet of flowers in a, in a vase with a card that was delivered to my house for my birthday. I had no idea. And I was going to hold on. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was going to hold on to those flowers that I bought for myself, thinking that there wasn't anything better, thinking that this is, you know, like, oh, yeah, I'm doing it up. Like, this is what I want, you know. And the whole time, God had something better for me. And I had no idea. This is how God is in life. We spend so much time holding on to things that we think that God can't replenish us with. We think that there's going to be a lack of something, that that's all God can do, and God can do so much more. And you just have to be willing to release the things that, that God didn't give you or the things that aren't for you or release the things at the times that God is telling you it's not time yet. And when the time comes, 
God will bless you with so much more.